Well, hello! Really quick, today I'll be DMing the winner of the GK64 on Instagram. If you didn't comment on the photo, you're out of luck, but subscribe to my YouTube channel or join our Discord server for future giveaways. Okay, what is multi-streaming? If you are a streamer, you might be aware that there are more platforms than Twitch to stream to. Services like DLive, Mixer, BitTube, and even YouTube can be a great alternative or help you expand your viewership. I'm not counting streaming Instagram or Periscope. There are probably around a hundred places to stream to. Multi-streaming is streaming to multiple platforms at once. Services like Streamlabs and Restream offer an easy way to push your stream to a select batch of platforms. It's a limiting experience to say the least. It's an attempt for these platforms to monetize on something that can be done easily for free. In the next five minutes, I'm about to show you how to stream to multiple locations without sacrificing the quality of your stream and by the end of this video, you'll wonder how Restream has the nerve to charge people money for this. First things first, system requirements. If you're already streaming on a platform like Twitch with your PC, then your PC is more than capable of multi-streaming. This method I'm going to show you it will not take any extra system resources. In fact, it will be equivalent to going live on one platform. If you don't know if your system can handle streaming and want to test it out, you can also use this method to test your stream out and I'll show you how later in the video. Alternatively, you can use Twitch tools or YouTube to test your stream. You'll need broadcasting software like Streamlabs, XSplit, or OBS. Use the broadcasting software of your choice. It really doesn't matter as long as you can push to an RTMP endpoint. What is an RTMP endpoint? It's just an address that your broadcasting software is going to send your stream to. RTMP is an older protocol but is pretty much standard for ingesting streams to popular platforms like Twitch. That leads us to the next thing. Choose the platforms you want to stream to. For example, The Vam Show streams to YouTube, Mixer, Twitch, DLive, and BitTube. I've created accounts for each one. Multi-streaming between YouTube and Twitch might be a breach of service, but if you're a small-time streamer like me, I don't think it matters at this point. Once you're getting exclusivity contracts, then worry about it. Each platform will have an RTMP address and key. Make sure to take note of it somewhere. We will need these later as they are the addresses we will be pushing the stream to. Now for the setup. I followed these instructions from the OBS forum. I'll link that down in the description for your reference. What we need now is another computer to act as a server or streaming box. Google Cloud Platform has an introductory credit of $300 for one year. That means we can use it to stand up a server for free for one year. That's one year of free multi-streaming. Create an account, they will ask you for a credit card, but will never charge you unless you decide to activate your account, so you don't have to worry about getting charged after your credits run out automatically. After signing up, you want to create what's called a VM instance, which is basically a virtual computer. In the left-hand panel, navigate to the Compute Engine and select the plus icon to create an instance. You'll get a whole bunch of options that may seem really confusing, so we are going to keep it simple. Navigate to the Marketplace and search for Ubuntu Trusty and launch that instance. All you need to worry about here is scrolling down and checking these boxes to allow HTTP and HTTPS, then just select Create. There you have it, your own virtual machine. It might take a little bit to fully initialize, but give it some time and refresh the page. Select the three dots on the right to pull a submenu next to your virtual machine and select stop. These things work like an engine. You can't work on a car unless you stop the engine. Again, wait, refresh, and select the same three dot submenu. Select view network details you are now going to allow communication past the firewall. The firewall is your gatekeeper that decides who is allowed to pass and how. In the left-hand menu, select firewall rules. You are going to create your own firewall rule by selecting the plus icon at the top next to the create firewall rule. There are four things to do here. Name it, something easily recognizable such as allow RTMP with no spaces, 
Two, under target tags, copy paste the name you just put in. Three, under source IP ranges, you can just put 0.0.0.0 slash zero. This will allow anyone who has your RTMP address to push it. It's really not a big security issue to open it up like this if you make sure to shut down your virtual machine after every stream. Your address will change each time you restart. Alternatively, you can restrict it by finding and inputting your IP address. You can find your IP address by going to Google and typing my IP no spaces. Four. Under protocols and ports, check the box next to TCP and type 1930. Select create and now you have a rule that will allow you to push your stream to this computer. Now let's start this machine by going back to compute engine in the left hand menu. To start your virtual machine up, select the three dot sub menu and select start. Once again, wait refresh. refresh is the solution anytime you're stuck on a loading screen waiting for your virtual machine. Click SSH. This will bring up access to your computer. From here, it's just a copy paste job. Run down this article and just start copying and pasting, waiting for each item to complete. You'll know it's done because you'll arrive back in the same spot you started at. If it asks you for permission for something, just type Y and hit enter. Now hold up. There's one minor hiccup not included in this article. You need to install unzip. You can do this by typing sudo apt install unzip. Then you can continue to copy and paste until you've reached the point in the article where they provide you code to paste in your config file. If you blindly copy and paste it at this point, then you've already started Nginx and your server is ready to go. At this point, it's a good idea to check that the installation was successful. You can do this by simply clicking on your external IP. It should bring it up in the browser. Edit the URL by removing the S in HTTPS. If you see this page, then congrats, you've successfully installed Nginx and it's running. Now back to the code. You need to paste in your config file. To do this, copy this file path in the article going back to your machine, type sudo vim and paste the file path. Here you must navigate with the arrows and hotkeys. Copy the config file from the article, go back to your machine and hit I, or then control V to paste it. Hit escape and type colon wq. The article gives you the commands to start and stop Nginx. Every time you make an edit on this file, you must stop and start it up again. If you get an error, it means that you misspelled something or left a semicolon out somewhere. Just make sure to double check that what you pasted is exactly the way you copied it. Now, all the commands in this article that you are copy and pasting, I'm not going to explain what they do, but you're basically giving it a little push to install software you need to run and receive your stream. At this point, you can test your stream. Copy your external IP address and navigate to the broadcaster wherever they allow you to input a custom stream. Under the address, type rtmp colon slash slash and paste your external IP address, then slash live. Under stream key, well, it can be anything. Make it up, but you have to fill it out. Mine is test. Now go live. You need a player. Download VLC player and navigate to open network stream. Here paste your RTMP address from your broadcaster slash your stream key. In my case, again, is test. You should see your stream. That means that everything's working and your machine is receiving and sending your stream. You're now ready to put all the addresses to all the streaming platforms your heart desires. Twitch has a list of all their addresses online. You can Google most all of them to any platform. If you can't find them, you can always send a message to their support team. They're happy to give it to you. Open your config file. Pro tip. You can always press the up down arrow keys to see different commands you previously put in. Find the one that ends in config. Once it's open, use the arrow keys to navigate between the line spaces. This is important to make sure that you are within the brackets like I have it here. Hit the I key. Type push RTMP colon slash slash paste the platform address slash your stream key and make sure, make sure to put a semicolon at the end. Once you have added all the addresses, press escape colon 
WQ. Stop Nginx and start it up again. And then you can exit. Congrats, you can now multi-screen. A couple more pro tips. Always a good idea to stop your virtual machine at the end of the stream to save money and to keep your system healthy. When you start it up before the stream, you'll also have to start Nginx using the command before you go live. Finally, remember that your external IP will always change, so before going live, you need to update that in your stream settings on OBS or whatever broadcaster you use. Finally, finally, Restream Chat is a great tool to consolidate all your messages in one place, but it's buggy AF, so you'll have to refresh it in order for it to work properly, especially with Discord. It's free, so what can you do? Let me know in the comments if you know of any other service that will put all your chats in one place. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful. Links to everything will be in the description. Please subscribe if you've liked the video, like it or don't like it, the choice is yours. And I hope to see you in our Discord for The VAM Show, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern and Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. All are welcome. Peace.